good afternoon, everybody. So um, my <clears throat> yeah, my presentation this morning was covering essentially the results of our projects. Um, so th with this uh, shorter presentation, what I was uh, is this the right one? Yeah. Uh, I can't see. Can we put it on the full screen? Oh, yeah. Is this full screen? Um, whereas, yeah, I wanted to take an embrace sort of more about what the project is doing overall about trying to, to change um, the way farmers are managing fall armyworm. So um, we have sort of several projects are covered, if you like, by the fall armyworm program, because it's, although the, the sort of core funding was provided by this NORAD grant, uh, we've now also got the uh, the global trial um, and um, the uh, the work that I've been uh, involved with with the Fall Army Worm Global Action that's run by FAO, um, and then also looking forward to where we want to take this work uh, in the future. So uh, we've already covered this. It's a pest of cereals native to the Americas that it invaded the old world uh, in 2016. Um, quickly spread across the old world. Within two years, it was in Asia. And we had these initial predictions of very uh, large crop losses. But as a, a generalist feeder, it, um, it's also attacked by a very large number of natural enemies. So the, the potential for control by uh, natural enemies is high. So uh, the, the NORAD uh, Fall Army One Project is this collaboration between C4 ICRAF, the Zambian Agricultural Research Institute, um, and the Department of Agricultural Research, Malawi. And the aim is to conduct on-farm trials of these uh, different agroecological interventions. So it's very specifically just certain agroecological um, practices, in specifically intercropping and um, um, soil amendment treatments. Um, and then to associate uh, um, these, uh, these trials with household impact assessments. Uh, and then there's a whole uh, range of policy and communications activities uh, associated with the project as well. So these are the landscapes. Uh, we covered this this morning. Uh, we have uh, 12 landscapes across um, three districts per country. Um, the districts were selected to cover the whole range of rain-fed conditions for growing maize so that we go from the very wet in the north there in Kawamba down to the very dry in Kazungula in the south. Um, the impact assessment, uh, we had a baseline assessment of households and then post-harvest assessments in, in four years. Um, so we did the same 180 farm households as the on-farm trial. So we, we were that those across those 12 landscapes, we we're actually doing trials on 180 farms. So we, we surveyed those farms and an additional 720 farms that were randomly, so another four farmers for every farmer that we we're doing the trial with we selected an extra four farmers from the same village uh, randomly from the village household list um, so that we get both the the group that we're working with and the group that we're not working with to try and understand how they are uh, how they understand uh, impact and how it's changing through time um, in terms of outreach, um, we've run quite a number of uh, trainer of trainer workshops. These tend to focus on, on more broadly on integrated pest management rather than just on agroecology. Uh, I mean, agroecology practices. Um, and uh, we've also been doing a lot of field days with farmers and also local things like uh, agricultural offices and so forth. And we're currently running a very large number of farmer field schools uh, through this season, we're not doing the trials in this season, so we've replaced we've kind of replaced the effort in trials into the an effort in farmer field schools. Um, we've had several pol policy briefs and white papers out, m mostly focusing on the SADAC region, and with the SADAC countries, this is really an FAO initiative, but that we've been using this project to contribute to. Uh, we've been working on. Uh, the uh, national IPM strategies for the SADAC countries. The idea being that if, because the tendency at the moment, as I sort of mentioned this morning, is that the countries just sponsor 
farmers to use uh, pesticides and often pesticides that are really not only very toxic, but often not actually that, that effective. And so the whole point of, of getting it in as a strategy in the country is that hopefully they will then follow that strategy and um, at least the technocrats within the country will have something to sort of fall back in to push back a little bit perhaps at their um, political masters. Um, we also produce uh, or are in the process of producing communication materials. So we have a couple of animated videos that we're doing. Um, we're doing some podcasts and radio, uh, farmer radio, um, also a couple of documentary videos and technical manuals. So where, with the technical manuals, what we've found is a lot of, there's both the national uh, manuals for their own extension agents. And um, also what we found is a lot of the um, NGOs that work with farmers have a manual on sort of how to manage your farm or something like that. So what we're trying to do is put a chapter in, in many of these different uh, manuals so that we can try and get out to people more about how to, to manage full army worm. Um, and particularly focusing again on IPM rather than strictly um, agroecological practices. And then uh, in terms of sustainability, we're, we've also trained some uh, students there, including one who uh, was sponsored by the TPP, came from uh, uh, Benin and uh, came down and studied in, in Zambia. Um, we've also tried to communicate to large numbers of, of other scientists working on the topic. So we held two um, online uh, uh, conferences, one this uh, uh, earlier, sorry, at the, in October last year and one the year before that. This was actually sort of because of uh, uh, COVID, we had planned a much, much smaller in-person workshops with with policymakers, but um, with COVID, we had to change our strategy, and we actually found it to be much more effective. We had uh, um, these two online conferences. They were attended by more than 650 participants with uh, something in excess of 60 papers uh, presented over the two days, and in both years, we ran a SADAC regional workshop for the plant protection committees um, which was a process to developing the IPM strategies. Um, however, I have to, as I mentioned this morning with Zambia just suddenly deciding it's going to um, give out free pesticides, we, there's this persistent pro problem, even where you've got the technocats within the country really supporting the IPM approach, you still get this persistent problem of political interference because giving out something for free to farmers is politically expedient. Um, and I'm not quite sure exactly how we can really tackle that. I mean, developing the strategies is a way of creating some mechanism for pushback, but I don't think it's the complete answer. Um, so I'll move on to the global trial. Um, this had a version one and a version two to it. So under the version one, it was just a group of people, particularly myself and a couple of colleagues at uh, CIMIT, uh, decided that trying to do a trial of these limited agroecological practices across a wide variety of socioeconomic and uh, agro, you know, biophysical environments was, a, was really important because the outcomes are context dependent. Um, so we set up a platform to take the data on the trial and uh, we then sort of put, put the word out to people, could they join in? Um, but the truth was that, although we put a lot of effort into setting up the, the platform and everything, we got very, very low uptake. So we, we did get a couple of groups in a couple of places coming forward and saying that they would do it. But it was more a case of sort of everybody thought it was a great idea, but then people tended not to follow through. Um, so we were a bit stuck there, but then we moved Fortunately, through FAO, who were one of the groups that were trying to help us, uh, they saw this opportunity because they actually got funding to sponsor countries to do trials. So they then said, well, let's make the, the global trial part of this global action. And so that's just starting. Uh, we have eight countries, three sites per country. So if this goes ahead in its full 
um, implementation, we'll have 24 sites where we implement this trial. It is also because we had to negotiate a little bit with the protocols, a broader trial. It's looking at the agroecological ones, but it's also tying that with comparing, you know, depending on the um, what the, the individual countries wanted to do, some pesticide treatments, some biopesticide treatments, and so on. The only thing that I would say is a disadvantage is that they it has moved from being a on-farm trial, which was the original version one, to a on-station trial, because I think all the, the national uh, implementers, they, they don't want to be doing it on-farm, they want to be doing it on-station, which is a bit of a shame, but at least we will still be testing this across a wide variety of uh, at least um, biophysical um, contexts. Um, we've had a number of publications out and we're uh, this this year we're trying to write up uh, the results of, of the the um, um, the main trials that we've been doing so that we should have a, a, a bunch more come out this year. Um, going on to, to future ideas. Unfortunately, the, the funding stream that we're getting from NORAD um, is not being renewed. And so we don't have an option to go back to NORAD and persuade them to give us another round. Um, and it finishes in June. Um, so within this project, we're just trying to develop the IPM recommendations and the communications material, and then that project will wrap up. We have the uh, the project, the the short, the small project with FAO to implement this global trial, which um, we're now at the point of just um, uh, you know get, getting the actual work implemented through these eight countries. Um, so that's that'll start and that'll run probably over about the next twelve to eighteen months. Um, just uh, coming up, we have a workshop with a, a project that was funded in the UK. Um, their project is also coming to an end, but they have um, an opportunity for extension funding. And we want to link uh, landscape features to pest control services. So I think that this will be a, a, an interesting opportunity to look particularly at broader things like, um, uh, you know, the amount of forest you've got and forest management policies and so forth in um, how you uh, control pests. Um, and then I think, uh, you know, we've got an opportunity to discuss ideas tomorrow. I think really when we're looking at uh, uh, looking to the future in this kind of project, we need to broaden from looking just at fall armyworm and just at maize to a much more broader um, idea of how agroecology and a lot of people have also been obviously talking about the other aspect of agroecology, the, the, the system thinking agroecology and and so forth. And I think thinking, well, where does pest control and so forth fit into that? And I, we haven't had any pr uh, presentations on pollination, which of course is a major important ecosystem service that, uh, you know, agroecology is often uh, promoted as a, as a solution to. Um, and uh, so I think that the, these are things that we can talk about. Thank you. <laughs>